YouTube memberships are now open to join below. Support projects like this, and beyond, and five years later to receive some fun perks. Thanks for the help, now back to the show. Good evening, Internet World and Universe! This is O.R. Ash, and welcome back to The Drawing Matrix. It's been a bit. I've been stuck in orbit. Watch and beyond, please, thank you. We are back once again to continue our Ultimates Overhauled series. After ultimizing the Andromeda Boys, and Greg a couple of times, today we'll be covering Chameleon, Fast Track, Edel, Jury Rig, and Clockwork. This is a really weird set, so let's go ahead and get into it. Overkill! Well? Well? Starting off today, we have the sneaky, slippery son of a salamander, Cam Alien. Now, we didn't see a lot of this alien, and I guess that's the point. He's used for a running name gag, sneaking into a building, and then running away in a dream sequence. After that, he disappears for the rest of the franchise. So, I guess he did his job well. Like most of the aliens in this set, he's a very basic concept with not a lot to him. Meaning, I don't have a lot to work with, but that leaves me a whole lot of wiggle room for ideas. For my first take on his ultimate, I'm going with a kind of basic buff up. Increase in size and strength, and reproportioning him just a little bit. Rather than just two his upper body now flattens out into a shape similar to a cobra's hood, making him more of a, a sneaky snake than a tube newt. With the cobra anatomical inspiration, I'm also changing his body patterning as well. Like cobras, this ultimate would use its patterning for intimidation, but it's kicked up a notch because he can just use it to, like, jump scare enemies. <laughs> Just a giant face popping out of thin air. Now, his powers supposedly work by him just changing color, but for this ultimate, I'm going kind of a different direction and saying that he instead bends light around himself to appear invisible. And I'm saying this to justify his new flashbang ability. Think fast, chuckle nuts! <laughs> Basically, he can bend the light around himself to cause a giant flash of light that disorients enemies. I chose this because it honestly feels like a really natural offensive progression to something like invisibility, but to add a more defensive progression to this ultimate, he is also getting a new ability that I call Skeletal Patter Luxation and Torsion, also known as Splat. Oh, I know I'm the one that makes these terms for these videos, but that's stupid. <laughs> With this ability, he can flatten and contort his body to surfaces, making it easier to blend into his surroundings by becoming their shape. And to finish him off, I'm going to be changing his tail spike from retractable to projectile. He's supposed to be sneaky, and personally, I think a sniper shot is sneakier than a backstab. Anyway, to recap, for his new abilities, he is now much larger with a more serpentine-like body, he has a new intimidating body pattern, can cause a flashbang effect, and can contort his shape, also known as becoming a flat fuck. I know it's probably not going to be left in, I'm still recording it just in case, because I think it's funny. As for his trade-offs, he ditches the retractable tail spike for projectile ones. Other than that, may I present my first take on an ultimate cam alien that I dub Rorschach. Ultimate Chameleon! Next up, we have another take on the see-through, simon-eyed sneaker, Chameleon. I like the idea of him trying to become more offensive without the new abilities being purely physical attacking things, so with this take, he too tries to disorient enemies, but in a much more... psychedelic way. His powers supposedly work by him just changing color, so with this ultimate, he can now rapidly change and blink various colors all around his patterning, making for a rapid radiant rainbow of retinal recoil. Basically, he can confuse and trip up enemies with his patterning. And yes, he can still go invisible, it's just that now he can pop up like Danny DeVito's house in that Christmas movie. As an added bonus to this ability, he can also spread what I'm gonna say is some kind of color-changing oil that his skin produces to other objects, turning them colorful or invisible as well. This is useful for stealth on group recons or setting trippy traps for enemies. I kept thinking about the retractable tail of the base form and was like, he's a lizard. It would have been cooler if they made that spike thing more of like a forked tongue that's retractable instead, but then his tail would feel pointless. 
literally. So getting weird with it, I thought, why not give him a second head on the other end? He could use it to bait in attacks while the other head prepares an attack itself. Anyway, to recap, for his new abilities, he can now manipulate the colorful patterns around his body to disorient enemies, he now has two heads, and now has full 360 vision via his many body eyes. And he can also make others than himself invisible or blink colors. As for his trade-offs, he loses his spike tail in turn for forked tongues and an extra head. Other than that, may I present my second take on an ultimate cam alien that I dub Blink Blot. Ultimate cam alien. Let me at him. Over. There. Next up, we have the blue blur of fur himself, Fast Track. Now, for years, fans have compared Fast Track to Accelerate, which honestly makes perfect sense, they're both speedsters. The comparative base power, along with the design that is just kind of a generic superhero look, I get why he's not in people's top 10. But I don't blame the alien itself, it's honestly not that bad. They just left a lot to be desired. I love the Derek J. Wyatt Omniverse concept for him. It's not much different, but it has a lot more character to it. I think the thing that would have made him much more likable in general was if they gave him some additional feature or ability, and in Ultimate is a perfect opportunity for him to stretch his legs. For my take on Ultimate Fast Track, I'm treating it slightly in the vein of a complete reconceptualization of the alien. First off, I want to make him a centaur. Rob, don't look at me like that. Ah! We don't have a lot of quadrupedal transformations, and I think if Fast Track were to have been one, that would have been a good shakeup in all the bipedal designs we got in Ultimate Alien. Also, research shows that in many cases, four-legged animals are much faster than those with two. The fastest quadruped being a cheetah that tops out around 60 miles per hour, and the fastest biped being an ostrich that tops out around 45 miles per hour. Thanks, Horace. For a new ability, he can now store kinetic energy he generates via running and use it to manipulate the personal momentum of objects and enemies. Either decreasing it, making it move slower. Or increasing it, making them zoom around uncontrollably. You know, bashing into walls and stuff. Alternatively, he can also use it to increase the speed of his allies in fights or for traversal so that they can keep up with him. Of course, this speed boost would go away once Ben turns back. We don't want to be accidentally left with extra speedsters in the Ben 10 community. Lastly, I want to give him a heightened vibrational sense. Think of it kind of like a spidey sense, where he can feel the vibrations in the air with his fur and react to it almost instantly. You know, call, call it a speedy sense, I don't know. Anyway, to recap, as far as his new abilities, he now has an additional set of legs and centaur anatomy, he can manipulate the momentum of people and objects, and he has a speedy sense. As far as his trade-offs, gonna be honest, this one has me beat. With how little it has, there isn't really anything I can take away from the base form that wouldn't ruin the power set of the ultimate. Like, he's got nothing going on for it. So, I guess you could chalk this up as a double loss for me. One, I don't get to give him a trade-off. And two, I gave him extra legs. <sighs> I'm so hungry. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate fast track that I dub Breakneck. Ultimate fast track! Next up, we have the big buggy boy, Edel. You can really tell that he was an alien that was made via studio demand, which is just a lamer version of Upchucks. I'm sorry, I don't think I like Edel. I'm going with the reconceptualization route and building this beetle back up from the bottom. One of his original concept arts was actually for an ultimate form and depicted him as a big buff guy with an additional set of arms. So I think it would be fun to do the same type of physique, but in my own way. One of my favorite beetle-like characters of all time is Olgrim the Dung Defender from Hollow Knight. Bonfundo! He is a big old orb of a bug, and I think the same rounded base for his large body set will work really well for my ultimate Edel. From there, I'm adding the additional set of arms, but I want to give them a purpose, so I'm going to extend his mouth down into his chest. I promise that statement will make sense in a second. The UA Edel design has its mouth kind of embedded in his chest, but I really like the sectional shell patterns of the Omniverse design more, so we're going to be combining them into a triple set of hinge shell sections that act like a six-way pop-apart 
jaw, chest, mouth. This gives the additional arms purpose because they can be grabbing and shoveling material into his chest to eat while his main set of arms are still busy with whatever he's doing. Or heck, he could be down on all fours and use them to shovel the ground itself in his material for a constant gastro-gaddling gun ammo. To differentiate his eating to energy ability just a bit, he now has visible energy between some shell sections. These are exhaust ports that he can also expel from. And if done all at once, he can make a large energy blast encompassing himself, like a big old bubble shield made of gastro energy. His horn I'm changing just to make it look a bit more powerful and make it look kind of like a cannon. Anyway, to recap, as far as his new abilities, he is massively larger. He now has a giant maw in his chest in which to nosh, an additional set of arms for shoveling in said nosh, and shell exhaust ports for expelling energy all around himself. As far as his trade-offs, because he is massive now, he is slow as hell. Look, this this dude is like fast track. There's like nothing to take away from him. Okay, he's he's a big, slow beetle boy now. Other than that, may I present my first take on an ultimate eatle that I dub Beetle Juiced. Ultimate Eatle. Next up, we are doing a double take on the Iron Stomach Cicada with another Eedle. For this ultimate, we are going to be cutting him down a size, literally. This ultimate is half the size of its base form, and that's because he needs to be lighter weight for his new main ability of flight. Like most real-life beetles, this Eedle can fly. Unlike real-life beetles, he does so by converting what he eats into energy blasts. He can now funnel energy out of a set of hard shell sections on his back. These are not the traditional type of wings that flap, but rather hard shell sections that catch the exhaust from his energy blasts. With this ability, he gets not just aerial capabilities, but comboed with this hard shell, he can rocket himself around like a living cannonball. In addition to his horns and back funnel, he can also fire energy from his elbows and knees for quick counters or launching blasts. But Ash, those are just Astrodactyl's powers. Leave me alone. Anyway, as far as his new abilities, he can now fly via energy blasts and additionally fire from his elbows and knees. As far as his trade-offs, he is now a Bitty Beetle Boy, sitting at half the size of his base form, so he's a tiny little dude. Other than that, may I present my second take on an ultimate Eedle that I dub Gastronaut. <sighs> because he's flying with style. Ultimate Eedle. Clockwork! What have I told you about doing that in the house? Sorry, Aunt Netley. Next up, we have the bronze boy with gear guts, Clockwork. Clockwork out the gate is a pretty interesting alien. It's the first time other than Alien X Ben has gotten to fiddle around with time itself. And based on his powers alone, he's... He's pretty overpowered. Now, considering his whole shtick is time, it begs the question if he can even evolve in the first place. On one hand, he can because he has a physical body affected by aging, as seen by the difference in the 10 and 16 year old variants of him, and time energy is just something that he produces, so whatever. On the other hand, he shouldn't be able to because he isn't fully affected by time energy, and proven by the end of series loop, Maltruant has been around for seemingly forever, so does he age? Does the species age? Do they change over time? I don't know. Let's make an ultimate. For my take on his ultimate, I'm actually going to be going against my normal thought process, and instead am plopping myself directly on the overpowered route. Over time, his body would start producing time energy so intensely strong his outer shell was aged to dust. Needing to protect his precious gears, this ultimate would eventually adapt and learn how to harness its time energy to form a hard light-like energy skin around itself. This energy skin is not very defensive, leaving him open for physical attacks, but when coming in contact with the energy skin, whatever it touches will be forcibly time-fluctuated, either aging it or de-aging it wherever it is. Basically, if you try to punch this guy, you'll end up either in kindergarten or the retirement home. Because his clicking ticking insides are no longer bound inside his bell bottom, he's also getting a new ability of form reconfiguration. He can now move and shift his parts around into different positions and his energy form will follow. This can be used to increase agility, speed, or defense on the fly in a fight. He can also dispense gears as projectiles and fly using his key like a helicopter blade. Anyway, to recap, his new abilities include time energy skin that forcibly fluctuates age, form reconfiguration, flight, and gear projectiles. As far as his trade-offs, he loses his defensive metal skin. It's no set of legs, but it'll do. 
Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate clockwork that I dub God Cog. Ultimate Clockwork! Last up today, we have the tiny tinkerer that tunes up tech, Jury Rig. Now, not many people like Jury Rig. You know, the same reasonings as most of this set of aliens, redundancy and simplistic designs. But I like Jury Rig very much. Not because he's a good alien. Heck, I don't know if you could even say he fits the Ben 10 formula that well, but I like him because he is based off of my favorite movie monster of all time, Gremlins. Because I know no one really cares for him anyway, I am gremlining the hell out of this ultimate. Now, to start out with a bit of a hot take, I believe that Jury Rig is a speedster. But Ash. When Grey Matter tinkers, it takes some time. When Upgrade Upgrade, Upgrades, it's faster because he merges with the tech, but Jury Rig is able to build fully functioning machines in a matter of seconds with just his little red grippers. And he does so in real time, proven by the modification of crab bots during a fight and building the food truck cannon to save Kevin from getting hit. He's smart, stubborn, and fast. I bring up his speed because I'm about to pull some sci-fi jargon. For my ultimate Jury Rig, his first new ability is duplication. Like a true gremlin, he can generate offspring. The way he does this is by intentionally speeding up his own cell growth and division. His base form has already been shown to be capable of speeding himself up, so with how smart he is, of course over time they would have figured out how to do it on a cellular level. But eh. The offspring he produces are similar in a sense to the Splixen clones in that they are independent thinking from each other. Now, that's where the troublesome bit comes in, because these little dudes have much more of a jury rig brain than a Ben brain. Also, for fun, they don't go away when Ben transforms back. I'm imagining a whole episode plot revolving around this conceptual problem, and it's funny, so. As a workaround, Ben can also just use the cell division to only generate additional limbs so that he can do all the additional work himself. Thanks to another new attribute of having conformable triple-jointed limbs, he can use his tail and arms in place of tools when needed. Comboing this with his cell division, he can pop off his extra limbs like a gecko tail to use them as tools again later. To get rid of his goggles, his eyes are now coated in a thick, slimy film to protect them from being blinded, and they can telescopically extend out of the sockets. You know, to get a closer look at what he's working on. It's not weird. Another new ability, he can produce what's known as elbow grease. This stuff is essentially a corrosive glue that melds materials together on a cellular level, making it near impossible to break one of his builds. Not that he'd let you try. Lastly, I extended his head spikes into a mohawk to symbolize him being the leader of his offspring. You know, just like Stripe or Mohawk from Gremlins. Anyway, to recap, for his new ability, he can now speed up his cell growth, giving him duplication and multi-limb generation. He has telescopic extending eyes, can conform his limbs into tools, and produce elbow grease. As far as his trade-offs, I'm keeping within the Gremlins theme and giving him a weakness to heat, aka sunlight. This is because if he gets too warm, his already sped up cells could get faster, and that would cause them to go unstable, melting him into a pile of goo, bones and all. Other than that, may I present my take on an ultimate jury rig that I dub Pit Crew. Ultimate jury rig. <laughs> um, new 5YL coming out. Seven year anniversary. And that is it! We did it! We finally finished through Ultimate Alien and all I have left is Omniverse. Oh, happy day. Oh, I'm so close to being done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of today's Ultimates in the comments, because this was a really weird set and I would love to hear people's thoughts. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I am OR Ash and I'm surviving. Are you? Peace. Fast lane when I pass in the street, bag of money in the passenger seat. Tempo's been asking for me on the road from the west to the east Way up, I might never come down Cause the coast wrecking up the flight miles So high, I might never come down So what, this is my lifestyle